Here I'll introduce the concept of equilibrium uh, using a simulation uh, made with a Molecular Workbench, which is a free software package that you can download and install on your computer. So what we have here is a simulation. Uh, two molecules, a blue one and a green one, can react to make a blue-green molecule. And what you see here is the reaction going on, uh, and you see the mole fractions of each as a function of time. Uh, so you have the mole fraction of A2, let's call those the blue ones, B2 the green ones, and AB is the blue-green ones here. Right? And as you can see, some molecules react, some don't, uh, and the concentration of each are, are fluctuating with time. You can see that over here. Okay, so there's always something happening. However, um, if we pause here and look at the running average, right, you can see that the concentration of all the molecules eventually converge to a steady state, right, so that nothing much is, is happening here. Right? So the concentrations of uh, reactants and products are not changing over time, and that's equilibrium. That's the definition of equilibrium. However, we, sh we should remember that even though uh, the concentrations are not changing, the reactions are constantly are still occurring. It's just that you're making as much reactant as you're making as much reactant as you are product. Right? So the rate at which you're making products and the rate so at which you're uh, creating reactants is the same, and so the concentration doesn't change. So that you can see here. So sometimes that's also called a dynamic equilibrium. Right? So even though the concentrations aren't changing, things are, are constantly happening at the molecular level. So that's equilibrium. Uh, so one the most common question, or the most important question about the equilibrium is, after equilibrium, do I have more product or reactant? Uh, and that is measured by the equilibrium constant, and the equilibrium constant, so here we have a very simple reaction where you have one reactant going to one product, it's an equilibrium, that's what this symbol means, uh, and the equilibrium constant, which is always written as K, is the concentration of product divided by the concentration of reactant. So if K is larger than 1, then you have more product. The concentration of product is larger than the concentration of reactant, and vice versa. If K is less than 1, if K is equal to 1, then you have an equal amount uh, of reactant and product. Okay, so here we have a, a slightly more complicated equilibrium where you have two product uh, made from one reactant, so this proton comes off uh, here to make acetate, and the equilibrium constant has been measured to be this value, so 1.74 uh, times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, that's the equilibrium constant. So, if uh, you add equilibrium, uh, you start with a mo one molar solution of this, let it go to equilibrium, what is the concentration of one of the product, uh, not molecules, but ions in, in this case? Uh, so what is the concentration of protons for a one molar solution? Okay, so stop the video, pause the video, think about it, and when you think you have an answer, uh, then press play. Okay, ready? Okay, so before I uh, show you the, the right answer, uh, it's always a good idea to use your common sense and, and eliminate answers that it definitely could not be before you go on to make computations. So for example, the equilibrium constant is, is very small. This is a very small number. So you must have much more reactant than product. Okay, And we're asking how much product we have. So that amount is going to be relatively small compared to a one molar solution. Right? So since we have very little product, 
uh, we can probably eliminate um, this one, right? That's here we're saying we have mostly product. Also this one, right? We have definitely more product than reactant, which is not true, right? So we have eliminated those two and we now have to uh, figure out whether it's this one or this one. Okay, and so to do that, the right answer turns out to be this one here, right? Meaning k is much less than one, so the concentration of protons have to be has to be much less uh, than one molar. So how did we arrive at this answer? And so we do that by setting up writing the expression for the equilibrium constant. Um, so that's the concentration of protons times the concentrations of acetate, which we don't know, divided by the concentration, the equilibrium concentration of acetic acid. So if we start with one molar acetic acid and we take, let's say, one of these molecules and break them up into ions, right? then for every ion we make x, right? we have to subtract that from one. Right? So you have x here, x here, and 1 minus x here. Right? So x times x is x squared, and 1 minus x uh, on the denominator. Okay, So you set up this equation and solve. Now, in this particular case, uh, you can solve this approximately by saying, well, we know k is very small, so x will be very small. And so we can say uh, 1 minus x is approximately just one, right? And then we get this answer here. If we don't want to make the approximation, uh, then we have a quadratic equation to solve. Uh, and there are many ways of solving this. So one very easy way is Wolfram Alpha. Uh, I had the link down here. Right? And so what I've done here is I've typed in the equation, which comes out like this. Right? and Wolfram Alpha automatically solves it. There's two solutions, right? but one is negative. That does not make sense, a negative concentration. Right? So it has to be this answer here, 0 0.00416, right? which is very close to the answer you get uh, if you make this approximation.